Tell me the story about the F-450. I'm very afraid. I'm, I'm honestly freaked out for him. Why did we get a $120,000 truck? I'm gonna kind of open up, uh, you know, we can uh, post this or we can't, you know, however you guys take it. It's been tough working with some of the guys on the team. They're both constantly late to work. They're just being inconsistent, not showing up for work. So 15, 20 minutes and the dispatch manager are waiting on these guys to start the day. Um, giving me pushback. If I ask them to do something, it's always like, why? Sometimes I, I may tend to throw too much on the trainees. One of our employees hit a car parked outside of our alley back here. Stop! You know, I was addicted to hardcore drugs. As of now, going forward, I'm really going to be raising the prices on these smaller jobs. It's really just wasting time. We ended up uh, damaging the side of the truck. He hit a stop sign. Typically comes down to this, where people have maybe a misunderstanding of how the services are being carried out. I just want to show you that we work in the rain too. So one of my guys slept in. He's not here on time. The crew already left out. I'm going to let him go. Uh, I don't like firing guys. I look at the company. I'm like, we got to do some you know, serious surgery. There's no cash. And the business dies. You ready to get after it? Yeah. All right, cool. 60% of businesses will fail in their first three years. I'm Mike Andes, and I'm on a mission to fix this. I know the fear, and I felt their pain. For the next 30 days, these owners will be sweating it out while trying to avoid becoming another statistic on this season of Business Bootcamp. First, we're going to start in Tacoma, Washington, where Dylan is the owner of a small lawn care and landscaping business. It's just its second year of operation, but it's already grown to almost 400000 in annual revenue. But now he's struggling to get out of the field and grow the business. All right, getting geared up. Day one of the 30-day business boot camp. I'm out here in our shop, aka my garage. Nothing too fancy, but this is what we're working with. One day I hope to have a dedicated shop space away from our house. It's getting worse as we get yeah. more new neighbors over here. I do feel that we're starting to starting to outgrow the space a bit. So um, you can kind of see that this is open parking out here on our street with some trucks and a dump trailer. We're starting to monopolize the space out here. Don't think the neighbors probably appreciate it too much. That's one of those things I was looking forward to talking to Mike about is when we might be able to afford a new shop space and what that might look like for us. My uh, couple of my neighbors aren't super happy with me running the business. That wasn't an issue when I did zero turn. And since then there's been some events that are making me feel like I got to get out of the house or at least at a minimum, if I add another truck, I need to find a new place for it. You have plenty of capital. You don't need to buy the trucks now. You don't need to buy anything now. We obviously later this month need to start thinking about a shop space. That's a hundred percent something that's very important based on what the media guys have told me about backing up trucks out of your driveway and all this other stuff we have to get that taken don't get care me of. started on that so we'll figure <laughs> yeah. that out later in the month you guys may start to learn about me that i could be a little bit forgetful so i'm either losing my lunchbox or my cup of coffee so before the crew gets here i'm looking for my lunchbox yesterday we hired it was the first day for a new employee her name is brie let's take a peek at this property we are on the second house of the day uh with our new new hire so far so good i have a i have a pretty good optimistic feeling about how how it's working out i usually try to make a little bit of noise just in case there's pets uh i don't know did i tell you i don't think i told you this but a couple weeks ago i got chased out of someone's yard and i had oh, to wow. jump the fence it was a six foot fence i jumped over it because the dog started chasing me i was like a pit bull now i make noise so i i can find out if there's pets in the backyard but you know attention to details making sure she's not missing spots she's coming in without a lot of landscaping experience she does have experience in the construction trades so she's no stranger to hard work and getting out here and getting after it my goal is to get every person within about a month of working with us to feel like they can lead any job, whether it's going on a mowing route on their own or whether it's ripping out someone's sod and replacing it, right? We'll just keep chugging along, trying to make it a good place to work, um, offering good training, and also just keeping a positive culture. My concern is more a matter of the, the work-life balance, the amount of hours you're working, uh, and the fact mm -hmm. that, that it's just not sustainable. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you have $150,000 in the bank. I think if you spent 40 to 50 of that strategically between now and spring rush, it will set up the business to be able to go up to that nine to a hundred thousand marker and have a, a general manager in place and give you a little bit more flexibility. So today we actually had someone call in sick and drive fast and break hard just to get used to it. Uh, we're actually doing a check 
training for driving our trailer. Stop. This is a lot of stress to have on somebody. Here's my truck. As much as I wanna be like, hey, like let's focus on growing the business. I look at the business and I'm like, there's some serious surgery, like I said, that needs to be done. That might just be the name of the game, you know? Next up, we're going to Arizona. And yes, landscaping even happens there. Aaron is the owner of a business that has grown massively over the past 12 months. And now he has multiple crews, gonna do eight, 900,000 in revenue. However, with that size of business, he literally has less than $2,000 in the bank account. And I am extremely concerned by the fact that he has hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and equipment and trucks. And this is a very scary situation. Hey, what's up guys? This is Aaron with Arizona Yard Maintenance. You know, we we're talking about struggles one thing that I uh, know is taking away from my profits every day is going to stores like this, Circle K, Quick Trip every morning. I'm at the hospital right now. My uh, six-year-old stepdaughter has uh, brain cancer, so. Oh no. I have a daily ritual of going to Starbucks. Um, when I first started out, I went to McDonald's daily, and then when I made more money, I upgraded to Starbucks. I just got my coffee. You can hear my voice is kind of chipper. That's what coffee does. Um, when I first started my business, I was making very little money. I was in a very bad spot mentally. I was rough um, about five years ago. Um, this was before my daughter was born. I'm going to kind of open up. You know, I was addicted to hardcore drugs, methamphetamine, pain pills. I could not get out of it, tried to get out of it. It was miserable. I still had my mind partially. Yeah, you know, I was still smart, but that truly is a disease. Ultimately, I found uh, found some help. I knew I had a daughter on the way. I knew I wasn't a dirt bag. I'm here with my daughter right now. This is Lily. Lily, how old are you? Five. She's five years old. Uh, these are my two daughters, Athena and Lily. Um, they are wearing their uh, custom shirts. Here's a picture of me, my mascot. Um, had an artist create this for me. Here's Lily, here's her custom shirt. Say smile, Lily. <laughs> my daughter was um, something powerful to give me the strength to quit. One thing I did is I went to McDonald's every day. Uh, I got oatmeal coffee and I would drive around and have self-affirmation talks with myself. I would, you know, look in the mirror, tell myself I can do it. I'm powerful. I'm not going to be taken down. Whatever I had to tell myself, I was going to overcome it. Um, I had to for this uh, innocent child. And now I have all this responsibility, uh, you know, family. I have eight to 10 other guys that uh, rely on me. I have a purpose now. When I look at a, a company that is struggling, it's like, okay, first and foremost, we need to stay alive. Then we can focus on, you know, thriving and, and growing profits, et cetera. Like in the short, short term, when you only have 2000 in cash, but there's, you know, almost 300,000 in liabilities, that's very scary. And I know what it's like to be there. And so uh, I don't, I, I, I made sure I don't want you to think I'm talking down to you in this call at all, because like, I remember what it's like to be there. And it's like horrible. And especially with that compounded with the fact that your 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 daughter's like going through everything, like I can only imagine the stress and everything. I know that a lot of my money has been going towards like personal expenses, like lawyer fees. Um, I had a surgery done, you know, that was like ten thousand dollars. So, you know, I've I've spent a lot of the business's money on personal stuff probably have like around a hundred thousand dollars saved up if I didn't spend it on like personal stuff. When I'm thinking about very short term, I immediately am looking at the balance sheet. That's the work we can cut fastest, uh, the debt, right? So for example, we owe 122,000 on the F450 to 2022. What's the payment on that per month? Just over 1700. And then we got like the boom lift. There's 36,000 on that. So do you know what the payment is on that per month? Just under 800. The RAV4, I'm assuming, is that used for the business or is that personal? Mostly personal. The two things I'm looking at the most right now is the Rav Four and the truck. So on on the on the wood chipper, there's a seventy three thousand dollar loan. What's that per month right now? Do you know? Fifteen hundred. So right now we're sitting at around probably five thousand dollars a month in payments. Is that about right? Five to six thousand. Yeah. Yeah. 
Tell me the story about the F-450. Why did we get a $120,000 truck? I'm just asking. I, I know you know Tigran. Tigran oh, yeah. Gert. I uh, joined Goat Gang last year in December. I invited everyone from Goat Gang 66 of the greatest of all time are here to compete for this thing. Who's going to take it home, boys? Yeah! Went to the competitions, got close to winning some of them before that. I won the excavator competition. I picked up an A, you know, without breaking it the fastest. Let's see what you got, Hot Shot. 109. That's it. Dude, 104. I'm excited. Good job. and I worked out a deal because he still needed the excavator. Um, I am getting $54,000. <laughs> to the winner, congratulations. Aaron from Arizona, here are the keys, brother. Thank you. $75,000 excavator, congratulations. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Take this thing home all the way to Arizona. Let's go. I'm taking it home right now. That same weekend, there was another competition, and I got second place for a 2021 F450, almost won that truck. They're nice trucks, you know? But I had all this, you know, I had $54,000. I had that that extra money, I considered it free money, and I just decided to put, you know, $30,000 down and get that truck. But if you run out of oxygen, the cash in your business, the business gets killed, gets whacked. Is your one big job that doesn't pay on time away from like a really very stressful moment? It's been tough working with some of the guys on the team. He bails on work frequently. They're just being inconsistent. I'm gonna let him go. Uh, I don't like firing guys. Next, we're gonna be paying a visit to David, who is the owner of Headband Movers, a moving company that is struggling to find work in the middle of the month and to book their crews out into the future, but more importantly, find crew members that want to stay in an industry where the turnover is extremely high. I started Headband Movers in 2020 during the pandemic. Uh, we've been operating for about two and a half years now. I was laid off from my job in San Francisco. I was out there going to school, using my GI Bill and working at a tech startup. Decided to come back to Denver and start a company. This week's a busy week. We got jobs every single day. We have big jobs, we have small jobs. My morning routine, I usually get to the office around 6 a.m., respond to emails, check some things off my checklist and uh, just get ready for the day. So we're on a job right now, one bedroom apartment. I'm gonna wrap up all the furniture. Got one of the guys pushing boxes. We usually get the smaller stuff first, especially like the boxes. We get those into the truck, stack everything high and tight. We're gonna wrap most of this furniture for the customer. Got a small bed, desk. So it should be a pretty quick job. One of my guys uh, bailed last minute, so I actually had to fill in for him because I couldn't find a replacement in time. Ended up having to cancel some meetings, wasn't able to get caught up with my leads, unfortunately. He bails on work frequently. A little bit frustrated with him. I'm gonna talk to him tomorrow. In terms of the frustration side of things, is it just them showing up? Is it sloppy work? Is it not fast enough? What's kind of the frustration right now? But with these two guys, it's uh, they're both constantly late to work, right? So 15, 20 minutes, so then the entire crew and the the dispatch manager waiting on these guys to start the day um, and then trolling me inside the team chat, not following policy, uploading when they're supposed to be uploading. And then um, if I ask them to do something, it's always like, why? Instead of just doing what they're supposed to be doing, they just, mm -hmm. I don't know, for whatever reason, they feel like they can give me pushback. Do you guys have team meetings very often? Yeah. So I do a team meeting once every two weeks. They get all the guys go out. I pay them to do promo. I take them to top golf and then we do a, we do a big team meeting. And, and do they have any sort of profit sharing or anything like that? Um, other than the bonuses, um, th that's, that's pretty much it. Have you ever thought about doing a profit sharing program? Yeah, I've thought about it. Actually, I didn't think about it until I started watching your channel. I've considered it, um, just just haven't taken the chance to, to do it yet. Some of it just gives you an opportunity to talk about like why, like, your reasonings, especially when they're asking why a lot, you know, the inclination is to be annoyed. And I, I, I'm the most annoyed back in the day was when, when people were like question why for every little thing. Mm -hmm. The thing is now when they ask why I actually enjoy it because I'm able to explain from a business perspective, how it affects the profits. And now they actually care about that. The thing that you're going to save and the reason why you'll actually make more money from the business pr perspective, doing a profit sharing program is not only then just being on time and the savings there, but your retention will typically be higher. And it's very easy to see who buys into the game. And I think for you, like the struggle has been finding people. So these guys, you kind of let them do their 
quote unquote bad behavior because you just need bodies. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we spot on. Uh, yesterday, one of my guys didn't show up, which was a headache. I had to work. It's been tough working with some of the guys on the team. So I'm going to address it today. Hopefully they can flip the switch and turn things around. Uh, but if they can, I'm just going to have to keep recruiting. Does he know that's our comms? <laughs> yeah, scheduling, for example. Yeah. I just use the reminders app on my iPhone. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty concerned about Aaron and his business after that call. That's yeah. where your profit is. This is your profit. When he does that, his profits are not just going to go up marginally. They're going to double and triple. Let's go. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're going to meet up with Carter from Rough Cut Lawn Care, who just started his business for the past couple years, but literally is making no money, yet working 60, 70 hours a week. He's come to the end of his rope. He's got to start making a profit in the business. Otherwise, things could start to fall apart. I do want to get an Augusta franchise, but right now I met with Lee, talked to him about it. He said, you know, to try and come up with the cash to do at least half of the franchise cash and then maybe finance the rest. Well, the next couple months try and get 10,000 saved and that's when it kind of hit me that my business isn't profitable because I realized that I'm not making enough money to put anywhere near that away in a couple months. My name is Carter. I live in Yuba City, a little bit north of Sacramento. I've been doing landscaping for about four or five years now. Just got my contractor's license, so we're going to start doing bigger projects. Really going to try and grow. Uh, this year, looks like I'll do a little bit over 200,000. Next year, my goal is to do 600,000. Talking to Mike a little bit. Uh, right now, my goal is to be able to actually pull a profit. I have about $18,000 worth of projects lined up. Um, that number may change and go up depending on how efficient I am with two new guys. So is that looking like 27,000 or so in revenue for this month or what do you, what's your projection for this month then? So yeah, probably about 27,000 total. And then how many total employees do we have? I know you said you added two more. So how many will we'll that be total? Three full-time, one part-time. You're, you're charging $60 per hour. Is that kind of what you're shooting for? Correct, yeah. And what are you paying those guys per hour? Uh, so my highest paid is 25 and then the others are 18 and then the part-time is 16. So let's just run the math on this. So if we have out of that 27,000, let's say that 24 of it is labor revenue because you got materials and all the rest of it. Do you think in maybe in labor revenue, maybe 24,000? Probably 22. Okay, let's go with that. 22,000, we divide that by, let's just call it four guys. So that's 5,500 per employee. And so if they're full-time, that's 40. Let's divide that out. Got 5,500 is what they'd be making per employee that's full-time, assuming that just the full-timers work. Call it average of $20 per hour plus taxes, $24 per hour times... 160. So right now, out of the 5,500 that they'd be creating, 3,800 of that's going to go out to wages. So that says one of two things. One, either prices are too low or in, there's massive inefficiencies happening. You know what the best thing is about having a small business that has good customer service? Is that you can raise prices and people don't leave. So if inflation goes up, if cost of wages and fuel and everything goes up, you can raise prices and pass that cost along to the customer. And if you don't raise your prices, you're gonna have such thin profit margins, you'll never be able to grow the company. You'll never be able to buy more trucks, more equipment, and you'll always work 60, 70, 80 hours a week, working your brains out, just trying to keep the business afloat. That's what's happening right now inside of Carter's business. And I'm trying to convince him to just jump Take the leap and raise prices. I guarantee you his close ratio will go from like 83% to like 70%. What's your close ratio right now? Do you know what that is, number is? Uh, the last I checked, it was like 83. Would you be opposed to growing a little bit slower next year, but being like really focusing on profit? Because if you could bring that number down to 50%, but raise your prices from 60 to 75 or 80, it completely fixed the profit issue. I think I could, I could probably get away with 70. And that's what I've been bidding all the new maintenance accounts. Um, this past week, past two mm -hmm. weeks, I've got five new accounts. I got hundred percent of them. Um, at doing like 70, 75 bucks an hour. Yeah, I, I'd recommend trying to move your, your minimum to 75. I really would. I don't think it's going to affect your, your close ratio as much as you think, okay. but ultimately right now, growth is literally going to cost you money. Like there's, the only reason it's staying afloat right now is because you're working your brains out and a lot of your hours are still out in the field. So all the money I'm generating is basically covering my guys. It's just keeping Wait. the business afloat. If you literally paid someone to do your physical labor and then you stepped out of the business, it's, it's not making money. Honestly, if you got five new customers this week, that's 10% of your, your customer base, right? I am not opposed to you raising prices on everyone now. The reason is because the grass is starting to grow again and you're going to have this window of time with the whole leave situation and the grass is growing. You could probably raise all your prices. I guarantee you, if you lost 10 or 15 of your customers, you'd recoup them within three to four weeks at your current rate of growth. But like doing that, 
would completely change the business. He has a high quality service and a really good market. He can absolutely charge a premium price, especially with the website from Long Care Web Design is gonna elevate the brand to the point where again, customer service and great branding allows you to charge a premium price. When he does that, his profits are not just going to go up marginally. They're gonna double and triple because right now there's not a lot of margin and there's not a lot of profit in the business. We've got to change that. All right, just leaving the coffee shop. Unfortunately, I kind of got the boot. They were getting real busy in there and I guess they don't like people staying too long. I was using their Wi-Fi. It has pretty strong Wi-Fi here. Uh, so I might need to find a new spot to get some work done. Uh, I got busy and then they, <laughs> kind of politely asked me to leave. Uh, look at that, take an extended lunch break. Just got some, uh, some pizza, pizza rolls. I have to admit, uh, this career has not been very conducive to, to good health. At least I haven't set myself up that way. So that's one of those goals that I'm eventually gonna try to get better at, packing a more healthy lunch. Uh, we're actually doing a training for driving our trailer. My goal, again, is to position ourselves to have all four employees ready uh, and trained up on driving the trailer and performing basically every type of job that we, we provide. Trying to get that in today. We're a little bit ahead of jobs, so it's kind of a perfect time to just throw this training in there and just position us to be, uh, be ready for next spring. I really do believe that, like, you know, if, if there's any unconfidence in when it comes to growth because of marketing you put that against google ads next spring rush and you just mm -hmm. really pour that on during march april and may like i'm talking 60 to 70 percent of your marketing spend during those months and take a look at what they call it. they just launched this new product a few months ago we've been really excited about uh, with the franchisees and that is called uh, Google Performance Max. So when it gives you the option for what type of ad you want to run, do mm -hmm. Performance Max. And what that does is allows you to put like a bunch of videos, a bunch of pictures, like eight headlines. And then it just basically optimizes your budget across all the different Google platforms. And we've seen that work really, really well. But I truly believe like if you spent 5,000 that you spent this year, which like you said, most of that was your decals for your trucks. If you spent that in next spring, Five to ten thousand. I truly believe you'd go from forty, fifty thousand a month to eighty to ninety. Like I really believe that. Okay, so uh, just drive kind of slow. Practice turning. Practice braking. So I skidded a little bit. So maybe the brakes are up a little bit too high, but that's okay. Uh, does he know that's our cones? <laughs> He's just grabbing them. <laughs> that guy wants them. He can have our cones. Yeah, yeah. All the way, all the way. There we go. All right, we're just wrapping up driver training. And this is part of the last part is to see, try to back the trailer down this somewhat narrow alley. So we've actually had a couple incidents. One person, one of our employees hit a car parked outside of our alley back here. And another employee backed into, stop, go forward. Another employee backed backed into a, a car parked right on the corner here. So now we make it standard to back each other out, especially when we're by the street. I'm feeling really excited because my two most senior guys, you know, they've been with me, Michael from the start, Jose's been with me now for a little while. You know, we sat here and just talked for like an hour after work and it's great because they're just coming up with all kinds of ideas for, you know, how to make training better. They're coming up with ideas on just, you know, onboarding new employees, uh, just everything. Just super excited when your employees kind of almost exceed your expectations. You know, these guys come in and work super hard. It's the end of the week for them. They have off tomorrow, but they they didn't act like they're in a hurry to leave. Feeling pretty pumped about their buy-in and this whole process, growing the company. First and foremost, I want you to run a Google uh, Performance Max ad. Make one up. Don't spend a lot of money right now because you're not going to have a good cost per click. You're not going to have a good customer acquisition cost. But I want you to do one of them simply so you know how to do it. So that you're more confident in the process of doing it. Customer acquisition cost be abhorrent right now. But just know how to do it because I know that number gets massively discounted during the spring rush. So for, mm -hmm. that's the first thing I want you to do. Second thing, is I want you to have a meeting with Michael and Jose and just present the opportunity and have very clear goals of what revenues are going to look like next year and how many employees you're going to have. Have them know that you're going to be buying those things throughout the winter to set up for that growth next year. And that's starting March 1st. And it's a presentation of 
Here's what the org chart would look like. Here's how your roles would be changing. Here's how your compensation would be changing. And I think based upon what I've already seen, they've already bought into a lot of that. Now it's a matter of how do we retain them. The next six months is simply going to be giving them a clear vision. You're saying this meeting needs to happen, which I'm excited about. But did you say you think we have the potential of 60 to 80,000 a month in revenue next year? Absolutely. Yep. I I think that would be as a minimum. Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) I know it was a lot for Dylan to take in, but this meeting is going to be extremely important for him to establish these two key employees for the next six months and make sure that they actually know they have a future at the business. So often times we can be debilitated because we don't even believe in our own objectives and the vision of the company. And if you don't have that, you got clear goals of where you want the business to go and what roles are going to be needed in that new company as you begin to scale up. The business is gonna look completely different for Dylan in 12 months if he can execute against these goals and actually have the confidence to grow in marketing. This is why so many people kind of stumble into growth because they never plan for it. And the reason they don't plan for it is because they don't have confidence in their marketing to be able to bring the leads and the customers required for that growth. So I've got to instill that confidence in him just so he knows that Google didn't know how to run the Google ads and to be able to know that he's going to have these employees that he can grow and use them as a foundation to build the company next year. We work in the rain too. The rain in Washington state while well, it rains in Arizona. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Aaron with Arizona Yard Maintenance. Uh, my business is Yard Maintenance. It kind of gets me in the door without having to solicit for trees. I like to do trees. Today, we are removing 22 trees that blew down in a community. This is some of my setup. So I got a, uh, a Vermeer stand behind skid steer. I have a boom lift, Genie boom lift. Here's my truck. Um, I don't think he quite sees the gravity of the cash crunch and the balance sheet. My uh, 2022 F450. When you're paying $1,700 a month on a truck that is worth $140,000 on his balance sheet. By winning that, I sold the excavator, was able to put a down payment and get that truck. It's very useful. It's a beautiful truck. And there's that much debt? It's nice. I recommend it. I'm very afraid. I'm, I'm honestly freaked out for him. If anyone needs a truck, get a F450. And this is why I'm very afraid of any influencer that tells people to buy a bunch of equipment, go into massive amounts of debt. The, the next giveaway is gonna be this 2017 F550 diesel. Because influencers have cash flow from their masterminds, from their videos, and from their social media. If you don't have that, you can't afford $1,700 a month for a brand new truck. That uh, The equivalent truck that is 10 years old could absolutely do the, the job. Maybe it only lasts a few years, but you'd get to the promised land of growth to where it'd actually be profitable instead of dying on the way to the journey thereof. But furthermore, with the rest of uh, my equipment that's on this job today, here's a dump trailer. And then I set up the dump trailer with the hitch with my wood chipper. That way I can pull my dump trailer chipper around this entire community. I can take it on the freeway. It's not legal. I've done it several times. Very cautious when I do that. Um, But when I don't have another driver, another truck available, I double pull. I really hope I can get to him just how important it is to get rid of some of this debt, release some of this, these payments, five, $6,000 a month. That's literally 15%, 16% of his revenue right now. That is all of his profit being wiped out because of loan payments. I feel like my my biz, biggest expense, what's killing me is labor. That That's why I look at the balance sheet first. But you're 100% right. And like once we get away from that acute problem that I do see there, then it becomes a matter of the efficiency of the labor. And I think P4P is the right call. Like what software do you use right now for your, your projects? I mean, to keep track of my scheduling? Yeah, scheduling, for example. Yeah. I just use the Reminders app on my iPhone. Okay. So, so I was one percent software, um, but it, it kind of went. It's, it's a dud right now. Um, are you open to putting to implementing software though? Because like, are oh, you yeah. are you gonna are you gonna wait for that one percent software? I don't have any really trust in it right now. I, I would highly recommend not. I, I wouldn't touch it with a ten foot pole. I'd recommend getting started with some software though. Like your size of business, the fact that you're running on your reminders app must mean you're a reminders app genius. Because I don't have a clue how you do that. I'm really still concerned, honestly, Aaron, about the acute 
part of the, the cash crunch. And, you know, do we need these assets as much as, you know, $1,700 a month? Like, you know, with your insurance on top of that, I imagine your insurance is like five, 600 bucks a month. No, it's, it's more than that. I'm, I'm paying a, around like $1,200 a month in insurance. Mercy. You know, it's like that truck's costing you three grand a month. Well, no, I mean, that's for everything though. And I have all my oh. tools. That's for the, uh, uh, Got liability. it for the whole whole liability. Gotcha. Yeah. That includes the truck though, like auto yeah. insurance. All my vehicles, everything. So got it. I mean, I've made around twenty thousand dollars in the last couple of days. You know, two and a half days. I'm waiting on those funds. You know, so that's why I got all this equipment is because I know it's going to be. I can just easily make money when I have this equipment. My my concern though is like, are we going to run out of fuel? Right. And that is this cash, right? That is like my number one concern. Cause it's like a two to three day burn that we're on. And as long as you can grow, like, I think you're right. You have the capacity with the trucks and equipment that you have to make probably 120, 130 a month. And that's where yeah. you'll be profitable. My question is, can we get there without, you know, running out of steam? Feel free to look at Jobber. If you want to start with that, I'll get you access to P4P, but it won't make a lot of sense until we actually look at it together. And then uh, we'll run some of the, the numbers next week together. And again, thoughts and prayers for your daughter. We'll, we'll uh, keep her in mind. All right. Thanks, man. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty concerned about Aaron and his business after that call. This is a lot of stress to have on somebody. And then last month with having the bank lock up his accounts for a couple of weeks. And now with his daughter being in the hospital and having cancer, like it's extremely stressful, but I'm afraid that he's caught in the vision of growth so much to the point where on his way to growth, he runs out of cash. There's no cash and the business dies. Had a tough time sleeping last night. Just having issues with uh, one of the guys on the team. I've already talked to him multiple times about being late, about his attitude, and it's really starting to affect the rest of the guys on the team. Got into an argument with one of the guys yesterday when he was backing up the truck. Ended up uh, damaging the side of the truck. He hit a stop sign. Accidents happen. I'm really not stressing the accident. It's a, it's a bummer because I just spent so much money getting these trucks wrapped. This guy's become, becoming just a continuous problem and is really just derailing the culture on the team. I've had multiple conversations with him. He's just not getting it. Yeah, it seems like he just doesn't care. Tomorrow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him go. I don't like firing guys, uh, but it's something that I got to do sure he's not going to be happy he's not the most level-headed kid really unfortunate but it's it's what i got to do to maintain the culture of the crew do you, you got two kind of bad apples currently are the people that might be trending in that direction no no everybody else on the team is solid moving stressful man nobody wants to have a complainer on the team the entire day I mean, sharing those numbers with the team have you ever done that um no no i haven't What's kind of your apprehension in doing that? Because I, I had the same apprehension back in the day. So what what what's kind of holding you back? Or why would you think it, you wouldn't want to share the numbers with the team? Honestly, um, I just think of like as a business owner, that's something that you should always keep personal, right? Um, and for what, I don't know why I think that. I just do. Um, but I've never even considered it in the past. I just thought that's that's how people operate their business. I had the same thought. And, and this is the thing. I honestly got to the point where we were doing so poorly that I figured, you know what? My last ditch effort is to share all the numbers with the team so they know just how bad the situation is. And hopefully like, they find a different gear. And I really think if you're doing really, really poorly and you have a lot of debt or it, it's, 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 it's pretty skinny, it's a very good thing to share it with the team. With, like Those trucks you have look amazing. The branding yeah. is fantastic. The problem that employees have is they see that and they immediately identify that as he's just raking money in hand over fist. An employee would look at that and be like, okay, if he can afford this, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollar truck, he's probably making a, a you know half a million bucks a year. Those come up with those random numbers. Now, if that's not happening, then it's a matter of okay, now they have this massive change of thought. Like they're not going to ask for raises. They yeah. they can see like my job is on the line if we don't turn this business around, right? And then if you're doing really really good down the road, now it's a matter of profit sharing, right? I really think you got to open up the books. Then you do profit sharing once it's becoming really profitable. So now they still are motivated to improve that bottom line because they get a piece of it. Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, I, I hear those stories, right? Because there's there's four guys in the company that just really have my back, right? They're all in. They tell me. And most of the time, I'm like, ah, I really don't want to hear it. Um, but I think you're right. I think that there's a lot of value in that. So I think I'll, I'll do that. 
Um, so this week kind of homework would be if you can have that meeting, that's not an easy meeting to have. I, I don't even know if you'll be able to have it the next week, but like if you can somehow have that meeting and open up the books by all means, I, I really think you walk out of that meeting completely like a big burden off your shoulders and the four guys that currently have bought in the fact that they're already bought in, it'll take it to the next level. Okay. Yep. I'm on it. I'll make that meeting happen. And then, uh, yeah. Dude, that's gonna be fun. That's, that cool. is an intense meeting. I, I don't feel bad if you feel like, um, yeah, I'm a little, a little nervous. nervous going in. That's a tough meeting. But I remember doing it myself and I was scared of my, my brain. It was simply a matter of like, I was at the point where the business would not have gone forward. We were losing money. No one cared. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to show them how bad it is. And mm -hmm. man, it just changed everything. Okay. Yep. I'm on it. I would be shocked. I would be amazed if he's able to have this meeting. This is a very difficult meeting to have with your team. Social norms have told us that you don't share the numbers with your team. You don't share information. You don't tell them how much you're making. All of that's a bunch of garbage when you're trying to create a really good culture, especially inside of a small business. There is no reason in my mind why you would not share the numbers with your team. If you're doing really bad, it's a great rallying cry. If you're doing really good, it's time to implement a profit sharing program so they're still incentivized to make sure that bottom line is increased. Let's see if David can pull this one off. It's a tough meeting to have. He's gonna be probably pretty nervous and afraid, but I promise it always pays dividends. If you want employees to think like owners, they have to have the knowledge and the compensation that of an owner. The information includes the pricing, the profit margins, et cetera. And when it comes to the compensation, that's typically pay for performance. Next week on Business Bootcamp. Really don't enjoy firing people. I'm like a big second chance, third chance guy. I just wanna show you how easy it is to cut down a tree. I, I would like yourself to be able to understand the, the picture before I take your advice. How long was it? It was like an hour and a half. That was long. <laughs> yeah. Step to that side. Step on that side. Maybe you just want to get their attention. <laughs> it's my train horn. Would you like your business to be on the next season of Business Bootcamp? Take your company to the next level in 30 days by going to mikeandys.com slash bootcamp and apply today. I also want to give a shout out to my wife and her affinity towards pillows. So we got a pillow here, pillow, a couple pillows, some pillows over there, pillow in the back corner. So I give her a hard time. Every season we have to have new pillows around the house. Uh, she comes home from the store every season with something new. We have the fall pillows. And then shortly after we have the Halloween pillows. They gotta be spookier apparently. And then, you know, we have the, the summer pillows. So seasonal just full rotation. Uh, but yeah, definitely appreciate it. I don't tell her that. Uh, again, it's uh, something I got to give her a hard time about when she shows up with these pillows, but down deep, definitely something I enjoy.